Yo, 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 I hope you're having an awesome end to your summer. Today, we're gonna be having our first ever full build and battle case opening. Now, it's not the newest set, Lost Origin. However, there is going to be a bunch of Lost Origin on the channel uh, this week. So if you wanna see a booster box or an ETB or some blister packs opened up, make sure you guys stay tuned. We're also doing a free Lost Origin booster box giveaway where we're gonna be doing a live stream and we're gonna be giving away a bunch of packs live and also for commenting on videos this week on my channel. Also, a lot of you guys have been asking about the uh, the Pikachu V Union box winner right here. Congratulations to the winner on screen right now. Comment down below and I'll be able to get your information one way or another. On top of that, we have a couple more giveaway winners to announce. We also have the Eevee and the Espeon right here from that GameStop opening. The winners are on screen right now. So here's the winner for the Eevee and then here's the winner for the Espeon. Espeons. We're gonna feature a bunch of your comments in today's video. Best of all, if your comment is featured in today's video, you actually won one free booster pack of Lost Origin, which will be opened up live in the Lost Origin booster break that we're going to do. So congratulations to everyone who gets their uh, their question answered today. For this video, we're also going to be doing giveaways for one of each of the, uh, the build and battle promo. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is hit that like button down below, subscribe to the channel with notifications on, and tell me what your favorite Fusion Strike pre-release promo card is that you wanna get for free. For the very first one we have, it is going to be a QQ MuQ. The very first question comes in from Liam Underhill. It is, what is your favorite year for Pokemon in general? What is, was your favorite year for Pokemon in general? Anime, cards, games. I really want to go back in time to like my childhood, but honestly, it's hard to remember the exact year. So for me personally, I'm going to have to go with 2016. Now, can you guess why I'm saying 2016? Well, it's because that's the year Pokemon Go came out. And, uh, Dude, life was amazing. Life was so fantastic when Pokemon Go came out, making up, making so many random friends in public. Uh, it was just such a phenomenal, like a cultural phenomenon uh, kind of thing that went down. Just like going for late night skateboard runs or longboarding runs, I would finish editing YouTube videos and go skateboarding at like midnight and just play Pokemon Go, which was really fun, really therapeutic, you could say. A grand bull. Oliver asks, what set has the best pull rates or your personal favorite? So we're gonna go with the best pull rates. Now for me, ooh, it's hard to say because it depends what you consider like really good pulls. I wanna say these days, any of the recent sets that have like a trainer gallery have fantastic pull rates because you're there's a lot of cards in those trainer galleries. You're not limited to only getting pulls in the major hollow rare spot, right? You're able to get you're able to get pulls in the reverse holo slot that are actually pretty, like really, really nice, you know? So anything that has a trainer gallery, and on top of that, I'll just give one more bonus thing, uh, one more bonus set. I'm gonna go with Shining Fates. Uh, Shining Fates was fantastic to open up as well. Um, and I just love a lot of the cards in that set. And there we go. We got a Pikachu V. Next question comes in from the homie Alan Buckner. His question is, what is your favorite card art from Astral Radiance? My favorite card from Astral Radiance would have to be the alternate art, uh, the alternate art Starmie V. That has Misty just vibing in a pool. And I love Misty, she's one of my favorite trainers. I even named my dog after her. Bruh. So it has a, you know, Misty has a special place in my heart. I think I had a huge crush on her too growing up. Um, so yeah, Misty's, not M Misty's full art, uh, Starmie V alternate art, that would have to be the card. And we got a Mel Metal. The next question comes in from IDK with a, uh, a Piplup avatar as their thing. And ooh, we got the Deoxys, nice. So IDK asks, when did you start collecting Pokemon cards? I started when someone gave me a Cottony when I was five slash six. I honestly don't know. I probably was like six or seven years old. Um, I think the popular sets at the time that were getting released would have been like the gym leader challenges or gym leader heroes or something like that. Like they were releasing a lot of those gym leader decks at the time. And so I remember my parents would often buy me, uh, uh, like when it came to Pokemon cards, they wouldn't really buy me packs because packs, they were like, yo, 10 cards or whatever, nine cards for like a $5 thing. Or we can get our son a starter deck, which has like 60 cards and it's like, $15 or 12 so so my parents instead of buying me booster packs they would uh, get me the starter decks 
So I remember having a lot of the different uh, gym leader starter decks growing up, like Sabrina's starter deck. I even had on uh, no, Onyx, uh, Brock starter deck, even Misty starter deck. I'd have to say whenever those sets came out, I can't remember particularly, uh, but it was when all those gym leader decks were being released. And I really wish they would do more of those kind of things uh, going forward. All right, we got a Galarian Corsola from Joseph Voss. What do you think of New Balance? And I gotta say, I like New Balance. I'm not totally like head over heels in love with them. Um, I actually did a brand deal with them once. They actually sponsored me one time too, which was really cool. I'll have the sponsored Instagram post on screen right now. It was for the New Balance 997H. Personally, I don't really have too many New Balance sneakers in my collection. However, my favorite silhouette would have to be the New Balance 550 and the 997H. Uh, there's a bunch of others out there too. They make a lot of really cool stuff, but typically I gravitate towards more Nike, Jordans, uh, Adidas. But every now and then there are some cool New Balances that really do, uh, really do keep like got my eye. You know, I'm like, whoa, those are those are pretty cool. Those are New Balance, pretty cool. You know, I also think it's really cool too how uh, they're like Jack Harlow's spawn. Like Jack Harlow is like signed to New Balance, which is pretty cool. And I like Jack Harlow. All right, let's see what we get out of this pack right here. Arcudo Onyx and a Dragapult Hollow Rare. Hey, there we go. Chris collects. My question for you is, what was the first ever Pokemon TCG product you ever opened? Honestly, I can't give you an answer. I don't know. It's been so long. I am now 27 years old, my friend. Trying to remember my first product I opened from over 20 years ago is going to be near impossible. Ooh, we got another Pew Pew Mew Pew right here. Thief the Thief. Favorite Pokemon type? Mine is electric. There are too many awesome electric types to choose from. Ooh, that's a really good question. Favorite Pokemon type? That's hard. I lean heavily towards steel type Pokemon. I love metal Pokemon. I love dark type Pokemon. I'm gonna have to go with fire. I'm just gonna have to go with fire Pokemon, man. I always had a thing for fire Pokemon. I love Charizard. I love Arcanine. Entei growing up and other banger as well. But yeah, let's go with fire. And we got a Deoxys. Next question comes in from the homie P. Wheezy, least fave Pokemon card of all time and why? Least fave, ooh, hard to pick a least favorite. I wanna go with, uh, I wanna go with, that's hard, dude. Let's go with Drampa from Evolving Skies. Cause it is like, no one wants Drampa. No one, no one wants Drampa. No one's excited about a Drampa card, let's face it. It takes up a holo rare slot, but you're getting a non holo Drampa. So we're gonna go with, uh, we're gonna go, oh baby, let's go! A Bolton V full art, yo, that looks amazing. Oh wow, wow. The texture on the card is so cool too. There's like a zigzag texture to it. Least favorite card, let's go with Drampa. And then back in the day, let's go with like a imposter, <coughs> imposter Professor Oak, yeah. Robert Monte de Oka. If you could make your own Jordans, what Pokemon would you choose to feature on them? Oh, that's a good question. Obviously, it's gonna be an Air Jordan 1, because the Air Jordan 1 is my favorite Jordan and favorite sneaker of all time. But what Pokemon to feature on it? Oh, that is so hard. I've seen some really cool custom Pokemon shoes in the past too. Um, but this is like, this is a tricky one to answer, man. I'm gonna just keep it basic. We'll go with Charizard. Let's just go with Charizard because at the end of the day, I love the Chicago ones. And then uh, it has already the red on it, you know, even though Charizard's mainly orange, I think. <laughs> Let's go with a Charizard themed Air Jordan one. And if I can find any cool custom Charizard Air Jordan ones, I'll have them pop up on screen right now. The next question is gonna come in from Nicole Hoder. If you could only open one set forever on your channel, which one? I wanna go with like Evolving Skies. I think Evolving Skies would be the set it was a really, really big set, and there's a lot of chase cards in there that I think would be able to keep things interesting, you know? We got a Drillbur, Shinx, Eevee, and a Galarian Opsagoon. It's Rat Child. Their question is, what's your favorite shoe brand? And honestly, I don't have one. It's, it's, I, I, I can't, I can't pick one. It's, it's too hard. That's like, imagine having multiple kids and saying, yo, pick your favorite kid. I can't do that. I just, I can't. Also, I've worked with a lot of brands too. I can't, I can't pick a favorite. So uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I just, I can't pick a favorite shoe brand. <laughs> I, I have love for all brands, man. I have love for all the brands out there. I just love shoes. I'm a sneakerhead. Miranda Connell, hope I pronounced that right. She's super active on the channel. Miranda, I always see your comments. She, no, she's not here. She's outside barking. Um, <laughs> my dad came in looking for Misty. Uh, what card are you most looking forward to from the new Lost Origins set? 
Ooh, that's a good question, especially with uh, with Lost Origin coming out tomorrow, actually, at my, my local's Manta Trading. Uh, we got no hit right there. I really haven't given it too much of a thorough look through. Like, I know some of the chase cards in the set, but I didn't... Uh, I didn't do a deep dive because I like to experience the art like fresh, like super fresh for the very first time. So the only times I really looked at any videos like showcasing the contents of Lost Origins were for the competitive standpoint of, of cards to find out what the meta could be. There's one really good YouTube channel I watch called Rare Candy, which does a deep dive. It's like a two hour YouTube video talking about the set, but it's like everything in terms of competitive value. I think we're just gonna have to go with the, the the Giratina V alternate art. JC's question is, what is your favorite legendary Pokemon? My favorite legendary Pokemon for the absolute longest time used to be Entei. And then Mewtwo and Mew, I also have really, really high up there. But considering how much time I invested into playing Pokemon the last two years, um, we're gonna go with Zacian. Yeah, I honestly have to say Zacian is my favorite legendary Pokemon because uh, I played the Zacian V deck for, I played it to the ground, man. Zacian is my favorite legendary Pokemon. We're gonna go with that. All right, and what do we have here? A Galarian Obstagoon once again. Golem Sunflower has subscribed for two weeks. So new subscriber on the channel. So welcome to the channel. Uh, their question is, what's your favorite Pokemon type? So I already said fire. They also said they love ghost grass, dark fairy and bug types. What's your JRP video game? I'm not sure what that means. JRP video game. I, I can't answer that question since I I really don't know uh I really don't know what that JRP stands for. The next question they also they had three questions there, so I at least I at least have you know I can give them some info that's new. Uh, how long have you and your girlfriend been dating for? Does she also like playing Pokemon TCG? And what's her favorite Pokemon? Ooh, that's a really, those are some great great. That's a three parter question. Oh my gosh, you asked like six questions in one. We have been together for uh almost eight years now, I believe between seven to eight years. Um, so yeah, a while, a while. Not not a full seven to eight years like nonstop. We've had some breaks here and there. Uh, but I've, I'm the type of guy that was, I calculated like when we went on breaks, how long we were apart for. And so I would calculate like our new anniversary because um, I didn't want to count the time we were broken up, like actually broken up into our actual relationship timeline. Um, so yeah, we've been together about seven to eight years. I'd have to double check on my phone. I have it written down. I think seven or eight years. Um, and then does she like playing Pokemon TCG? Yes, she does. And I'm actually gonna be going to her house later tonight. Uh, we're gonna be playing Super Smash Bros on the Switch. And we're also gonna play some Pokemon TCG with the Battle Academy 2.0 that I bought. And we got a Cinderace V. And that's funny I said that because Cinderace V is a card that's also in the starter deck of one of the Battle Academy decks. And what's your favorite Pokemon? I don't know her favorite Pokemon. That That's a hard one. I don't think I've ever asked her that question, but um, I do know her favorite trainer. She is a huge simp for Ray Raihan or Ra yeah, she's a huge Raihan simp. Uh, she would love to get a Raihan Nendroid. Like she loves Raihan. I think for her birthday one year, I even got her the Raihan full art trainer card I bought from Manta Trading as well. So yeah, Raihan's her, her favorite her favorite trainer. Aaron Polly asked, which Pokeball tin was your favorite? Which Pokeball tin is your favorite? Well, I'm gonna have to go with the luxury ball. Or Koryo right there for our pre-release promo. This one comes in from Jimmy Menendez. Also, I do recognize when you guys uh, comment frequently on the channel, like consistently, uh, I really appreciate it. Like a lot of you guys coming in day after day to comment and be active and hit the like button and all that stuff. It really feels awesome to have like a really cool community behind you, boy. Uh, so thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for supporting me in the channel. I do also know when people only comment for uh, the giveaways, Cause like I can see when people comment on videos. Oh, we got a Gudra. So if, if I can see you commented eight different comments within eight minutes on eight different videos, I can tell you are only watching for the giveaways. That hurts my soul a little bit. The, the whole point of the giveaway is to give back to the community for watching the video. So if you're just watching for the giveaways, it hurts. Uh, but it is what it is, you know, I, I can I can only do so much. Jemmy Menendez uh, said, uh, congratulations on 10K. Questions, what is your all-time favorite Pokemon? Mine is Mew and Snorlax for sure. Ooh, okay. I knew one of you guys would ask me what my favorite Pokemon is because that's such, such a common basic question. Um, so if you don't know, 
my favorite Pokemon of all time would have to be Blastoise. I love Blastoise. He's my favorite starter Pokemon of all time. He's my favorite Pokemon of all time. In Pokemon Leaf Green, I nicknamed my Blastoise Shell Shocker because that's what the uh, Blastoise was named in the Pokemon movie Mewtwo Revenge or whatever. Next question comes in from Emily Perigo, who has been subscribed for three weeks. Welcome to the channel, Emily. What's the best Pokemon card you have or most valuable or your favorite? All right, what's the best Pokemon card I have? That's really hard to say. Oh, that's really, really hard to say. I'm gonna have to go with, like I got a lot of heat, as you guys know. I, I don't mean to brag by any means, but I opened so many Pokemon cards. So there's like a lot of best Pokemon cards I have. Uh, my favorite would have to probably be, shoot, this is really hard. I'd have to go through my binders. So uh, honestly, the answer might change when I'm editing this video. But we, uh, I love this Mew, this gold Mew from Celebrations. Another card I really love is the uh, Mewtwo V-Star from the Pokemon Go set and I actually got this card for free. But most valuable, I'm not sure. I'd have to do some research. Claude Robin asks, what do you do with all of your Pokemon bulk? Bulk refers to like all the extra common, uncommon, rare cards that you don't want to keep in your collection. Uh, they're kind of low value cards, cards that are not really playable in decks either. Those are the cards that uh, a lot of people will throw into mystery boxes and you'll get scammed from Walgreens or Walmart and, and those mystery packs and all that kind of stuff. So bulk are like the really cheap cards that no one really wants. Say for example, all these cards, I really have a, no use for any of these. Maybe the Adventurer's Discover I'd keep, uh, but the rest of the cards I would consider bulk. And so I basically just put them in bins, like Elite Trainer boxes or Collector's Chest, uh, stuff like that. And I just store them aside. And uh, sometimes I'll give them away for free. For now, I actually have a lot of my bulk still in my house. So I, I haven't figured out exactly what I want to do with all the bulk. I know some people like to go to like children's hospitals and, and give them uh, away to get the kids. Ooh, we got a laddie ass. All right, so I think that's the last Build and Battle promo. So for today's giveaway, uh, comment down below again which Build and Battle promo you want. Laddie ass, we got Oricorio, we got Pew Q Mew Q. And we got Deoxys. So these are the four promos right here. Again, comment down below and uh, hit that like button and subscribe with your boys' notifications on. Jamil, is, uh, their question is, or their comment is, congrats on 10 camera guy. Thank you. Appreciate you, fam. And he asked, are you half Filipino? And the question is, or the answer is yes, I am half Filipino. Uh, I did the ancestry test a while ago, so I have the exact like percentages of everything. But I am like half Canadian and half Filipino. That's what I tell people for the most part right away. My mom is full Filipino and my dad is white, Caucasian, Canadian, with a mixture of different countries from Europe. So yeah, your boy's half white, half Filipino. If you ever wanna see your boy in the Philippines, oh, we got Dodrio V. This card is nasty in pre-release. Uh, if you guys ever wanna see my Philippine travel vlogs, I have a main channel called Sneaker Talk and I have a playlist for all my Philippine travel vlogs. So click it down below. That's the reason I do YouTube for a living, for the travel vlogs and for the vlogs I make. Sir Master. It is a easy question for the gold. What does Pokemon mean to you? And he even gave his own answer, which is pretty cool. He said, me, easy nostalgic love for the idea and brand that I get to share and pass on to my kids and also being kind of the first generation that gets this bond. Yeah, that is so true. We're at the age now where a lot of us people in our 20s and maybe early 30s, uh, we're at the age where we're part of that first generation of Pokemon that also got to appreciate Pokemon as kids but now our kids, like some of y'all are having kids, y'all also get to share that with your kids. So that's really cool. Pokemon to me is like very nostalgic to me. It's super nostalgic. It's the fun of collecting things and it's the, the video games and it's just, it's a fun hobby, you know? That's that's what it means to me. It's the thing that so many people people uh, throughout the world, doesn't matter your, your race, your ethnicity, your gender, your background or whatever, Pokemon is a thing, a hobby that can be shared and loved by so many people and people can connect over it. It's similar to like music, you know? Music connects people to, sports connect people to, certain video games. Pokemon is such a big franchise that it's such a such a huge all-encompassing franchise. So whether it's the video games, the trading card game, Pokemon Go, uh, the manga, the anime, the movie, like so much. Uh, and it's, it's multi-generational as well, so. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's a sense of, of community and I think that's what it means to me. Becky Zimba. Why is the Machamp alt art so expensive? Should we try and get it? So, if you guys don't know, the Machamp alt art is one of the most expensive alt arts in the world. 
and it has no reason being that expensive. There's actually a really cool YouTube video I watched talking about it. I think OKJ okay, Love made the video or someone else. It has no reason being that expensive. People thought it was a really cool card in English, and uh, some people bought and sell. And when when you're a card, when you're a, uh, a person selling a Pokemon card. What you do is you'll look at the recently sold prices and what people are currently listing on the map and you're going to list it around that same price or a bit higher, right? Or lower if you're desperate to sell it and get some quick cash. What happened to Machamp is a couple copies just sold for a lot of money and that sort of set the floor price for the market of what people were willing to pay for Machamp. And so it was like if enough people were willing to pay for a Machamp alt art at $130 or whatever, even though it's definitely not a $130 card. Like, don't get me wrong, it's a good card, but it's just uh, people's price memory and people seeing it sell at that, so they're just gonna keep on listing it at that. So that's why the card's so expensive. Does it have, is it worth that amount? I don't think so. If you really love the card, buy it in Japanese for dramatically less, honestly. Uh, so yeah, that's my answer for that. Let's get to the next question after this pack. Smeargle, Carvana, Clampro, Morpeko, Snom, and another Cinderace V. Bruh, another Cinderace V. Cathandra asked, uh, they said, congrats on 10K. Question, what is your most favorite deck you have played with? And honestly, we're gonna have to go with the Zacian V Union deck. I was gonna say Zacian V, Zacian V Mew celebrations. However, playing Zacian V Union is so much fun, man. The, the satisfaction you can get from playing a Zacian V Union is like Exodia from Yu-Gi-Oh. It's, it's a lot of work to make it happen, but when it happens, yo, it is fun. I even competed in a couple tournaments using Zacian V Union deck. Uh, I had the vlog, I stuff to post on the channel, I have the content and everything, and it's uh, yeah, it's a really, really fun deck. Ooh, we got a Bolton V Max right there, nice. So we got the Bolton and we got the Bolton V uh, full art, so very happy with that. I also really like Zacian deck, uh, just the ability of Zacian V, because one card game I played a lot of uh, when, when I was in high school, it's called Card Fight Vanguard, and they have a, a feature in the game called Drive Check, and so basically before you attack, you like flip the top cards of your deck, and uh, that has the ability to unlock extra damage or like an extra effect. So when you use Intrepid Sword and you get energies on the top of your deck, it gives me like a similar kind of vibe. And I like that risky luck based uh, kind of play style. You know, that's just kind of like how I like to do it. Gil Louie asked, if you were to pick any sneaker and Pokemon to do a collaboration with, which one would you choose? And do you think that they'd be hype P.S. Congrats on 10K for the channel. So we kind of answered this question already on the channel with the Jordan 1 and Charizards. However, let's just go with a pair of other shoes and a different Pokemon um, since we have the option to share that information now. Let's go with the Nike AirTech Challenge 2. And I would love to do a Blastoise themed one. Yeah, another starter from Kanto. I think it would be hyped because people love Blastoise. And if it was an official collab, that'd be so sick. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I do that. That that is that be do that that is my answer. All right, let's get to this next pack. Puky Muku. Hey, let's show you guys the difference real quick between the Puky Muku you can pull and the Puky Muku in the actual Fusion Strike set. See what we're able to get here: Clauncher, Growlithe, Stufel, Sigilyphs, Clubpus, and a Meloetta. Dando Man. His question is. How long have you been into the TCG collecting game? For me, it's been around eight years with maybe three years in between where I lost interest. So for me, I was always into Pokemon cards from like four years old all the way to maybe like 14. And then when I turned 13 or 14 years old, uh, when I got into junior high, I was like the ringleader of, of the card games and the hobbies that we did in elementary school. So whatever card game I decided like we were going to play this week or whatever, or start playing or collecting was what we would do. But yeah, when I went to junior high, pretty much card games were deemed uncool and everyone stopped playing card games altogether. So I sold off pretty much all my cards from Pokemon to Yu-Gi-Oh. So I took a break from pretty much 13 or 14, uh, up until 18. And then in my final year of, uh, of high school, I got into uh, Cardfight Vanguard. I even basically, we created like a Cardfight Vanguard club, which was pretty funny. And it's very nerdy, especially in a high school, you know? We would meet up after school in like the library sometimes. I was heavy into Cardfight Vanguard for maybe like a year or two, like two years, so 18 to 20. And then I stopped collecting cards altogether once I got into university and college, cause I just, you know, I just stopped. I didn't, I didn't care anymore, my interest changed. And then I just got back into Pokemon pretty much the summer of COVID, right after Darkness of Blaze came out, I guess. It was right before Champion's Path. So uh, I remember going into 401 games and they were like, yeah, you, you have to pre-order pre the Champion's Path Elite Trainer Box. And I was like, wait, what? You got to pre-order a Elite Trainer Box? 
Ah, I was hoping Deoxys, man. Deoxys is probably the most valuable. Question comes in from JJ Laurentino. It is, uh, congrats on 10K. Question, if you had to give up either collecting Pokemon or sneakers, which would it be and why? Bonus, do you feel like you've lived up to expectations this far? What's missing? All right, great question, JJ. And it also says how long you've been subbed. Two weeks, welcome to the channel. Um, so, I'd have to give up collecting Pokemon cards. It's painful to say that on this channel, but sneaker collecting and, and sneaker YouTube is my like main job, my main source of income. So if I never collected sneakers, if I stopped collecting sneakers, financially, I'm gonna be uh, in a different place. You know, it's, it's a big part of my job is sneaker stuff. So I have to stop collecting Pokemon cards, but I love Pokemon cards too. Electrode. Uh, and then their question was, do you feel like you've lived up to expectations as far? What's missing? Expectations in terms of what? Uh, if you're gonna say in terms of this channel, I'm gonna say no, I have not lived up to my expectations for this channel. What's missing would be a lot more vlogs. I wish I was posting a lot more consistently. Um, I wish I'd be able to travel to Japan, although you can as of September 7th, I think you can travel to Japan without being on a strict tour, a guided tour. I'm missing the, the Pokemon vlogs. The, a big point of this channel is gonna be the Pokemon vlogs because I know there's a big void in a, a big content gap that people are itching to watch. So I know this channel is gonna blow up when we start traveling over to Asia, to Japan, to Philippines and stuff, and documenting Pokemon and the culture over there on this channel. Uh, oh, we got the Oricorio. Let's compare the two right here. They're very, very similar. Super, super similar. I'd say I haven't lived up to my expectations yet, but we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there soon, you know? Question comes in from Obama. Hey, Obama, let's go. Congrats on 10K. What would you say is the hardest part of having more than one YouTube channel? I'd say the, the hardest thing when it comes to having more than one YouTube channel is uh, trying to manage it. Manage it in a way where you're posting consistently on both channels and also managing it in a way where they can both be as successful to the fullest extent that you want them to be. Because my energy and my efforts are split. I have quite an addictive personality too. So when I get into certain things, I go pretty hard at them. So like I've definitely, ever since this Pokemon channel has come out, I've definitely, definitely neglected my main channel a lot. And a big portion of that is because uh, I got burnt out when it came to a lot of the sneaker content and stuff like that. Also making Pokemon content was just so easy. I became so passionate about it and it was a fun challenge as well. Uh, just to see if I could, you know, I've, I've had like eight YouTube channels, so I know I can do YouTube no matter what, but it's a fun way to test my content creation skills, uh, skills, skills, content creation skills to see if I can do really well in another niche, you know? So, uh, yeah, I'd have to say just trying to, to manage them at the same time on a consistent basis at the highest level is really hard. So there's going to be always a point where something is lacking or suffering. And so that's why I have my girlfriend Natty edit some of the videos every now and then. She doesn't do the complete edits for everything, like 100% in full, but she helps out a lot. So she cuts down the editing time. I pay her as well. I give her bonuses when it comes to cards too. Uh, so yeah, let's get to one more question because this is the final pack. Let's get to one last question right here from the homie It's Reflect who has been subscribed for over a year. Question is, do you think sneakers are dead? And I gotta say, I don't think necessarily sneakers are dead, but the, the genuine sneaker community and the love for the game that a lot of people have had over the years has definitely shifted and a lot of it is gone, especially because it's gone so mainstream. Resale culture has really taken over a lot of it. COVID really amplified that and made sneakers so much more of just a commodity that's to be bought and sold. Similar to how Pokemon became so like infested with resellers and scalpers, you know? So Pokemon lost a lot of uh, a lot of charm for a lot of people because of the resell resellers hopping into the game. So, you know, reselling is always gonna be a part of every single hobby out there in the world. You're in a hobby that you buy and sell and trade and you collect things, right? So it's gonna happen, but I don't wanna say sneakers are dead, but they kind of are <laughs> in, a, in a slight way. All right, Ladio. Thank you guys so much for watching again. Subscribe with the notifications on for the giveaway. Comment down below which build and battle promo card y'all wanted. Click on screen right now to watch another video. Thank you for spending a lot of time with me today. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.